Right then, welcome back. Uh, I don't know where to start with that, to be honest. I think if you'd have offered me a draw this morning before the game, I would have taken it. And I'd have been very happy with getting a draw in the circumstances. Um, but the way the game went, obviously the, the first half, if you saw my tweet in the first half, uh, where United had had precisely zero shots, um, didn't really go to plan. I, I actually thought we were better than zero shots. I, I thought we actually created opportunities we didn't create shots but there was there were chances there and that's the, the madness about um just looking at shots on xg you can't really just do that because you have to look at you know some of the penetration that you was getting that maybe didn't quite lead to a shot and, and that's the sort of uh place that we found ourselves in now yes we were behind in the first half you could say we deserved to be because of the sheer volume of shots that liverpool had but and there was a couple of big saves from Onana in the first half. But, like, I also thought United was equally dangerous. I'd say it was an iffy-iffy that Liverpool probably just edged um, in the first half. Second half, we we get ourselves equal with, honestly, one of the most audace, audacious shots. And only Bruno would try that because I think most other players would maybe not even see Keller so far out of his box, but he's tried it, he's hit it. It's gone in. There's a weird silence in the ground just before it hit the back of the neck. Everyone's kind of confused. What the fucking hell's going on? But he's hit it. It's flown in. And um, and United are level. Then United had a bit of a flurry where we created about half a dozen shots and half a dozen chances and seemed to be quite confident with our play, quite cutting as we was going forward. And then actually, as soon as Anthony came on it, that kind of went away. Um, we did obviously get the goal through Maynou, um, who was just adding... He's actually silencing doubters before they pop up. They're, they're just starting to stand up like this and be like, he doesn't score enough goals, and then he scores, and they'll be like, oh, fucking hell. Like, what a six-month he's having, honestly. What a six-month. He's like the shining light of Manchester United at the moment. What a six-month Maynou is having. Um, and he had a relatively quiet game. Didn't get on the ball a hell of a lot. When he did was still making pretty good decisions with it and um and actually it was really good play for him to to get the ball out that led to the attack which he ended up scoring from as well so i thought it was still a real solid performance from menu didn't get on the ball anywhere near as much as you would hope him to i'm just having a look here um 14 out of 18 passes 14 passes is nowhere near enough for a central midfielder but you know he he won 9 out 8 out of his 9 uh, jewels on the ground and it was another decent performance from him uh capped off with um a ridiculous goal so congratulations again to to Maynou, one man midfield show i thought willie kambala had a, a pretty solid affair in defense um had a he looked pretty comfortable with the ball he looked like he was coming outside of his box as well to take um to try and take the ball off Liverpool players. I, I thought it was a mature performance. In the circumstances you find yourself in, a Liverpool team that's pushing for the title uh, at Old Trafford with a crowd that's a bit fed up after the last two results. Yeah, you can understand how it would be um, a bad time for him to come in, but you know, he came in and, um, and, and had a real solid shift. On the penalty then, honestly, yeah, it's a, it's a penalty, right? But... It's also a dive, and both of those things can be correct at the same time. I don't know what takes the precedent. Um, was it Elliot that went down? I, I can't remember who it was. Either way, he's gone down, um, but he's played his pass. Liverpool are still in possession. He was not getting the ball. I don't actually understand where the line gets drawn between it because he's fell over him on the floor. Okay, does that make it a foul? Like, going to ground in that circumstance, you've given him a decision to do, he gets nowhere near the ball, but he also does not take the player's legs away. He's on the floor as the player's flung himself on the floor. And the, the whole sort of wording about diving is, did you simulate? And simulate can sometimes even mean exaggerate. Because it's, and he did. He's gone to ground under fucking no contact whatsoever. I think he thought it was probably going to be contact, and there wasn't. Therefore, it's a fucking dive, bro. Never going to get overturned. But the, the, and the, but 
my issue with this is I haven't got an example off the top of my head because my memory ain't that good. But I'm certain there's been incidences like this where people have gone through on someone at United and we just haven't had it. And that was my same after the Chelsea game the other day. You go, okay, I don't actually see any contact. It feels like it's a dive. But United don't get those. And we didn't get the first one as well, which I thought was stronger, the, the first half penalty. The, sorry, the first penalty, yeah, first half penalty um, against Chelsea. I thought that was a stronger penalty. Um, but it's just, we just don't get them. And it, it's, it's weird to sit here feeling like I'm disappointed. I feel like we've lost two points, but I'm pleasantly surprised with how we played. Like I thought it was getting battered. I thought it was getting battered, but we didn't get battered, but we also didn't win. So I can't be happy with the draw at home. You have to have better than that. But I also thought we were going to get spanked and we didn't. So there's something to take from that, maybe. And we've been pretty solid against Liverpool. Liverpool haven't beaten us this year. Is it nil-nil at Anfield? Beat him in the cup during the league. Which means the only time that Jurgen Klopp has beat Eric Ten Hag was... The seven nil. It'd have been better if we'd have won today. So what have we got? Two wins, two draws, one defeat is our record under Eric Ten Hag against Klopp. No, I just get the vibe that I, I think there's gonna be changes and I don't like it. I don't like seeing the constant noise around it. I don't know. I wish they'd come out and back him or not and just make a decision and get on with it. But the, the, the what's annoying is that I actually genuinely think there's half a fucking chance to go for Southgate and that pisses me off. Because he's clearly not an upgrade. It seems like they've made such good decisions along the way so far that if you then go, and now there you go, Gareth Southgate, I will throw up in my mouth but also go... How have you made such good fucking decisions so far and then appointed this fuckwit over Eric Ten Hag? <sighs> anyway, let me know what your thoughts were on that. Um, we saw Amrabat. We saw Mount. We saw Casemiro play. Are we starting to get some of our team back together, albeit not any defenders? Can we rely on Willy Kambala um, to see the season out? Um, I can't remember what we've got next week. We're away, I think. And then we've got Coventry in the Cup. Let's have a look. I know it's Coventry in the Cup in two weeks. Two weeks today. Uh, but next week is, let me see, Bournemouth. I was thinking, I wanted to say Brentford. I'm like, it's not Brentford. We've just played Brentford. Yeah, Bournemouth. Bournemouth on a Saturday, five o'clock kickoff. Coventry. Half three. Wembley, Sunday. And then a midweeker against Sheffield United. And then Burnley to round out April. And then Palace on a Monday night because fuck United fans, clearly. But anyway, cheers for tuning in, as always. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.